Hey nerds, support Venture Forth over on our Patreon to unlock exclusive bonus content. Now on to the show. Hi, I'm Omar. Dry And I'm your DM, Ethan. Welcome to Venture Forth. Previously, you all had made your way north to the Takir Ruins, where you had discovered a meeting of the Order of the Red Wolf. You had looked on as this order had trapped several civilians in cages, one of those being Zorkal, Flynn's fellow member of the Iron Light Collective. As you all looked on and saw Zergath take out a knife as he takes one of these civilians and begins to slash her throat. You all engaged in battle. You came out guns blazing as you began fighting all of these different creatures, the acolytes of the Order of the Red Wolf, as well as Zergath and Artemisia. You all had been defeated in battle, every one of you dropping unconscious and falling to death. Kellick awoke and had a bit of a meeting with his patron, his god, as they had a conversation about his life. Kellogg was sprung back to life. As the rest of the party was also sprung back to life, as you were brought back for the purposes of your life being extracted as an offering to these beings in the plane of fire. As a gateway, a door was opened into the plane of fire. You guys once again engaged in combat and were this time victorious against your enemies. This time, you're able to defeat them, knock them unconscious, and place gold coins on top of their foreheads, immediately zapping them back into Hayfried's void. As the portal, this massive doorway to the plane of fire closes in front of you, it is immensely quiet. You hear nothing but a slight rustle in the trees from the breeze. As you all look around at each other, bloodied, bruised, and exhausted, what would you all like to do? So I had just kicked, like, or I just, like, put a um, uh, chaos orb into Amara. Yes. And stuck the coin on her. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, so the second the second she pops out of existence and the portal closes, I'm just going to fall backwards and just like lay on my back, staring up at the sky <laughs> for like ten minutes. Is everyone all right? I'm all right. I think. I can't feel my fingers. I don't know what I've just seen, but I never want to see it again. What uh, happened? I sort of look wide-eyed at the group. Uh, are, are the people that were uh, tied up behind us uh, on other... I think they were on other pillars. Is that right? Yes, they are all still tied up. Um, but as the life... Um, the, the life-draining magical item that you had that you had uh, zapped the power out of was also taking life force out of them, you can see um, that a couple of them are unconscious. One of them... Um, the what uh, appeared to be the husband of the dwarven woman who had her throat slashed um, still seems to be in this in this in between state of consciousness, sort of in this lucid state. But everyone else seems to be unconscious. Okay. Do they, from what I can tell, do they look like stable, unconscious, or like make a medicine check? For them. All right. Let's go. That's why you pick a new die. Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen. Um, you can see that uh, most of them are stable, possibly just need to, to be rested, and then they will wake up on their own. Um, and you can see that two of them have fallen into a bit of a deeper unconsciousness. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go straight to attending to those people, trying to make sure they're uh, able to recover. 
um, and cutting them down, of course. And, and um, Okay. As you cut them down, what specifically, what actions are you taking? Um, I'd like to... Do I have anything at all to put? Yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, I would like to... Is that it, though? Okay. Um, between the two of them, are these... Um, Dwarves? Or these didn't... are both dwarves. These are dwarves? Okay. Is this the dwarven couple? No, the husband was fine. The One of them does appear to be the woman who had her throat slashed, mm-hmm. and the other one, um, just one of the, the other civilians in the cage. Okay. Okay. Uh, and the one who had her throat slashed, though, I was able to use uh, Spare the Dying on previously. Yes, you were. Um, does she seem... Of the two of them, can I tell which one is doing worse? Um, you can see that uh, from what you remember of just waking up, yeah. um, it seemed that 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 fluid that you were forced to drink, that, being, uh, um, yeah. that that brought you back, mm-hmm. was also administered to them. So you can see the the slash mark across her throat is almost nearly um, uh, healed all of the way, mm-hmm. um, presumably just from whatever was in that solution. Um, they both seem to be doing about the same. Okay. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to um, administer a, uh, a healer's kit to her. Okay. Um, and just try to, uh, if there's any remaining opening in that wound, stitch back together. For sure. Uh, and make sure it's clean. And then I will also um, cast a healing word on the other one. Okay. Um, with my final spell slot. Uh, say so. And as you do that, you see their eyes just beginning to open. Still, you can tell, physically exhausted and drained. Um, but at this point, uh, both of them are stable. I would just look up at the group as I, after after doing this. Just like <laughs> another another crisis averted to some extent, or so we think. I start and I clutch the the bracelet on my bracelet yes Yes. on my wrist i'm gonna clutch it and it's gonna glow and i'm just gonna hold it to my forehead and just expand my senses throughout the entire area that we were just battling on i want to say that the danger is gone i want to say it's gone i want to say it's gone it has to be gone and i'm going to check the whole area for spooky vibes yeah a a spooky vibes check (laughs) at advantage yes no thank you (laughs) <laughs> okay, okay. That's fine. <laughs> uh, nine. <laughs> uh, nine. You're not picking up any spooky vibes Plus around your you. wisdom. Uh, it's not just oh, yeah. Roll. So fine. Fourteen. <laughs> Fourteen. Um, you, <laughs> are, uh, you are very confident that there are no spooky vibes. Nice. There we go. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you see a little bit of relief wash over me as my feathers relax a little bit. I think I'm very confident the danger is gone. As I lean back a little bit against my, on my staff, lean into my staff. Can anyone else feel their fingers? I just like reach my fingers up into the sky while I'm laying flat on my back. I don't think I've ever died before. Is this normal? Will I ever feel my fingers again? Is there anything wrong with her fingers? Make him medicine. <laughs> <laughs> Can I feel my fingers? Yeah, what are, what are, what are all of our sensory... <laughs> Natural twenty. Natural oh, <laughs> nice. There you go. There you as go. I eagle eye her fingers from across this field, as, as well as someone who just died and was in a tremendous <laughs> battle can be, she seems fine. Your fingers are fine, Alma. They all feel fine. Wait, wait. I'm gonna start flicking my fingers, kind of in the same way that I used to when I was inhabiting Alma's body, <laughs> like when I would want. Sp- I, can I? Well, can, can, can I can I can I feel my fingers? Can I feel my toes or talons? <laughs> like, can I feel my talons? Can I feel my? Um, your entire body like feels a little bit numb, but that could okay. possibly just be from the adrenaline. All right. I uh, I think I have all my faculties. I don't know how long we were out for though. How long were we away? Where were we even? I don't remember anything. I don't remember anything. It was just. Eyes closed, eyes open. Dark. Then, do you, did you remember? Kallik? Uh, 
I just remember falling and then being tied to a to there, and I'll point to the post. None of you uh, remember anything between falling and coming up. Uh uh-uh. uh. Just the what? stuff that they made us drink. That was it. It was very Bro- awful. It taste. was gross. Yeah. I kind of liked it. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, I. Uh, me neither. Um. Not much. Uh. To be said, I. I suppose we died. Or something close to it. I. I. Uh, it feels different than coming up from. Uh, slumber. But we actually died? Well, I don't know. You lost consciousness, Flynn, and then, like, I watched Straya and Cal- like Everybody lost consciousness, and then there was a big, a big boom. It's like a big, big boom of light, and then I don't remember anything, and then I was woke up, and I was tied to a pillar. I'm gonna look up at the sky. What time of day is it? Um, it is nighttime. I am going to have anyone who would like to make a nature check for me. Um, I'm not going to do a nature check. What I'll do is um, I'm just laying on the ground this whole time, just like spread eagle, just like hands out. Um, the key that was removed from uh, the stone to shut the portal, is that still in my hand while I'm laying yes, on the ground? Yes, you, you still have so possession So as I'm laying on the ground, I kind of just slowly start moving my fingers and toes as the mention of fingers not working. And then I'm assuming I feel my fingers. Yes, you and, I, and then I slowly, And then I slowly, as I... You know, start feeling my body again. I'd like to grasp the, the key in my hand and just think about it. Reach down to my souvenir pack and put the key in it. Okay. And as you grasp onto this key, um, you can feel that it is still pretty hot. But right. each second that you hold onto it, it seems to cool more and more. Do I feel like it's going to burn if I put it in that? It burn no. Anything in even that on room? the initial touch, it did not burn you, yeah. but it's it's cooling. We all knew there was a key, though. We all saw yes, that there you was all a key. Very clearly saw. Yeah. Hey, Flynn. Ah. Do you think that's the key that 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 Kale's dad had? Oh yeah, maybe oh. He made, maybe he made it or or something. Maybe. Okay. Well, I mean, they were looking for a key, and that's a key, right? Yeah. So we should keep it. Maybe Kale knows what it is. Yeah, we can bring it there. Oh, Are we uh, sure we want to go back and see someone who makes keys to blinding portals to? Hellish landscapes. Well, Kale didn't make the key. His dad did, and then his dad is missing. So maybe they found the dad. And, yes. and Kale should know that, right? But anyone in that family who has that, uh, it's all too much for me. Ugh. What did everyone get on their nature checks? Seven. Eleven. Fourteen. Fourteen. Um, Shreya, as you look up to the, the moon and the stars and their alignment, um, you look up and definitely the same night that you guys... Were, you guys were like you guys weren't unconscious for a day or, or longer um, and with the position of the moon and the stars you guys were out for no longer than an hour wait a minute there's a chamorous uh, tree uh, on a stay we must have only been out for at least no at most an hour that's that tracks. I'm also looking up at the sky. I can't make. I'm. I'm lost in thought. Uh, it's not so easy to bring people back if they've been gone for much longer than that. I'm tilting my head back and forth on the ground, trying to see what he's seeing in the stars, and I don't see any of those things. And then I tilt my head backwards so that I can look at everybody else behind me. And um, as my neck is tilted backwards. <laughs> upside down I see um, a half orc with like a big pauldron and the symbol that looks very similar to what we saw when we were at Flynn's um, Iron Light Collective and I'm just gonna look up at him upside down and say hey who are you my name is Zorkal oh wait Zorkal Flynn isn't that the guy that you don't like well uh, um what? Hi. Hello. Uh, g- g- good job uh, out there. To you as well. Yeah, it did not go as I uh, originally planned. Yeah, huh. you were in a cage. Yeah, what happened? We saved your life. I, I came to investigate, and uh, unfortunately, I was not as quiet as I thought I would be, and uh, I was seen and captured. Yeah. Not my, not my brightest moment. Yeah, you know who you should thank, right? 
for not being dead. <laughs> Flynn, I appreciate uh, you uh, coming to help. With that, I sit up and <laughs> try to hold back my excitement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no problem, uh, Zorka. You did great out there. It was good, good teamwork, and um, you know, you, you held your own. And, and I'm just glad I could fight, fight with you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> maybe you should tell. Maybe you should tell that that lady back back at home how great Flynn was, and that he deserves to be a uh, like um, guard, cent, cent, centurion, sentinel. I, whatever. Okay, sentinel. I, I will definitely pass on. Lord uh, of the sentience, I think is what. <laughs> right. <laughs> Flynn's, uh, Flynn's efforts will will not uh, be unnoted. I, I will say that. Okay, good. Maybe we can stop running around so much. Yeah, I would like a, a break. Is, is this a good spot? Did we go somewhere? I do not want to spend any more time here. I would like to study it. I, I, what's the nature of this key and and these ruins? And those mirrors? They're oh, super creepy. What in the hell was that beast they were trying to bring through? Yeah, Corrupt, that, corruption. This, this whole land area is corrupted. If you study it, if you must. But I, uh, I'll, I'm gonna like point out beyond the ruins. I will dwell there and watch and make sure no more danger is coming this way. And I'm gonna head head over to the edge of the ruins. All right. And if you do not all mind, I would like to take some samples and study a bit myself. Uh, that is no worry. Yeah. Do you need help? Uh, an extra pair of hands would be appreciated. Sure. Also, uh, I, I, I've I've taken this journey to cut down more, but the remaining people are still tied up. We have to try to make sure these people can make it back to their homes safely. Get them out of this nightmare. Oh, right. And I'll look back to the um, to where the lady is uh, that I stood over and guarded until I fell. Uh, how is she doing? Um, that was the the same lady who Kellick was mm-hmm. was just treating. She seems to be doing okay. fine at I'll, this point. Uh, I'll, oh, I'll run up to her if she's not too far away. Um, hi. Is she is she awake? She is like in and out okay. of consciousness, stable, but just physically drained. Are, are you okay? I'm. Uh, I think I'm. I'm gonna be okay. Good. Just rest, and I'll just pat her on the shoulder, and uh, I'll. Take my, my sleeve and I'll just kind of wipe some of the sweat from her brow. You're gonna be okay. Then I'll stand up and turn back and head towards Zor call to help him out. Okay. As I like <laughs> sway one arm to the other arm and I try to roll to my side. <laughs> and I get up onto my hands and knees. And I just like am slowly <laughs> making my way to standing. <laughs> um, You're fine, Alma. I'm not fine. I'm so tired. I'm so. I haven't felt this drained since. I've never felt this drained. Well, you did die. <laughs> I did. And I was doing so. So well up until the end there, you know? Like, I really thought I was gonna, I don't know, kick some butt. I thought we might stand a better chance than we did. I hope Avery's okay. I hope he built that second prison, because <laughs> maybe he didn't, that would be real bad. Well, would they give us three uh, coins if there weren't three cells? I mean, probably not. But I've only ever been in that one cell, so... Oh, no. Do you think? I really hope it's not going crazy there, cause like, <laughs> Timmy can't really handle it right now, and 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 Hayfrey's got a lot going on, and there's also another person there. So now there's like three people from the from the that that all follow the chaos and the red wolf, and I hope they don't all start chanting together and causing mayhem. There's also a dragon. You know what? We should probably check in on them as soon as we can. I've like finished setting this final person like <laughs> on a on a makeshift pillow of like whatever kind of um, just like blanket I've had in my bag. Yeah, that's, 
place is probably not a lot of fun to be in right now. We were smote with the light of Femir. I look up at the stars. Is that what that was? Best I could make of it. Not quite uh, how I remember it, though. I don't know what's going on. But Hayfried is probably uh, also in over his head a bit. So we will have to make our way back there. Yeah. Um, are any of these... Uh, you said the husband of the, the dwarf uh, was, was uh, conscious? Yes. Uh, I'm going to turn to him. Uh, well, where do, the, do... Do you know the rest of these folks? Or are you all desperate? I, I know my wife. Um, I don't know any of these, these other people, though. Well, well, where did the two of you hail from? We're from Westbury. Westbury? Well, that's not too far. Uh, we could at least uh, get you back to Nestle Valley. That was the way we took. So maybe that's the safest way back as well. If we get back to Nestle Valley, we would be... We, it's an easy track back to Westbury. I think we can accommodate that. And uh, and the other two folks, are there, they're out. They're down for the count at the moment? They seem unconscious, but stable. Okay. Maybe just a little bit of rest needed. Uh, if we can get them to Westbury, then maybe that's a good enough stretch. Uh, we, I kind of look at our, our vertically challenged group of <laughs> heroes. <laughs> Might be a, a feat to carry them all, though. I, I think I'll be fine if I can just, like, get a little bit of rest. I'm just so tired. Yeah, well, we'll have to study the place and all of that as well, so maybe we, it's best we make camp here. It's for a time. Yeah, that makes sense. Maybe in one of the buildings, like, not right in the circle of, of chaos. Search yourself. I don't want, like, that portal to open up again. Or... Tinkin needs a key, Yama. We have a key! I know, but the logic would su- suggest that you put the key in to open the portal. Don't, we won't Glenn, put the key in. Make sure you don't put the key in. Uh, I will uh, look up from <laughs> doing investigation with Zorkol in the middle of it. Yeah, no problem. I got it right here. Okay. So from where I was uh, speeding away from the center of this place, uh, I'm going to have flown up over uh, the, the table that I, w- I think a few of us were under at some point during the battle. Yeah. Did you say there was a book on that table too? There was, yes. There was. Um, so as I'm coasting over the table in that direction, um, the book's going to catch my eye again. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, something in me, some instinct, like pricks my eyes in the book. And I'm going to swoosh down to the book on the table uh, and just open it and look at what's inside. Okay, um, as you as you look at the exterior of it, um, it is this uh, leather-bound book, probably a couple hundred pages, and you can see on the inside, um, before you even open it, you can see the edges of the paper are like weathered and yellowed from time, and you can see the, the leather binding on the outside is frayed in certain places, and it, you can tell it's, it's like this decrepit-looking book. And as you barely begin to open the front cover, you can almost feel yourself being pulled into the book uh, as you uh, close it once more. Uh, I, uh, uh, no. Uh, and I'm going to flip the book sideways and see if I can see anything on the spine of it. Is there any writing on it? Is there any glyphs or language? Yeah, so on the side of it, you do see some uh, what looks like engravings into the leather work that you cannot read. Uh, if anyone has, um, it's, it's the group within like earshot. If I call back down to them from the, where yeah, the you're table actually is. you're not too I'm far not too away. far at this yeah, point. Yeah, you're you're probably no more than fifty feet okay. away. There's some language on this seemingly forbidden book. This book that is very fell in nature, but. There are some writing, some markings, some symbols on the side of it that I can't decipher. If anyone is good with language of these, of civilizations, and especially these terrible underground groups, maybe we can discern what this book is, but I would not recommend opening it. Something inside it that just is very 
awful. Chilled me to the heart. Um, yeah, I can take a look. Yes. And I'll walk over. I'll, I'll, Zork, I'll be right, I'll be right back. Okay. And I'll, uh, walk over to try it. And I'll take a look at the book. Okay. Um, on the side, um, in Infernal, you see the word husk. Ooh. Um, yeah, it says husk. You can't read that? No. Unlike anything I've ever seen. Or is it unlike anything I've ever seen? Uh, or? <laughs> no, you've actually you've actually seen Infernal a couple I've times. Seen Infernal. Um, oh, just okay. with yeah, the, the etchings that Olma took. Uh, um and Flynn, just with how in Hayfried's Void um you heard the sheep creature speaking Infernal, okay. you understood it, but you can still discern that it is infernal. Okay. It's not it's very clearly not common. It. It's just some some switch in your brain seemed to be turned on that you can now read and and understand Infernal. I have never seen it outside the context of <laughs> what we've seen amongst these chaos-causing groups, these dissenters in the natural order of things, and I... Uh, and I... My feathers get ruffled again as I take off, and I'm still headed toward the edge of the ruins. I, you, can't, I can't handle it. Are you holding the book, or are you taking it with you? No, I'm not taking okay. it. I am leaving that shit. Okay. Um, okay, uh... Bye. Be careful with that thing, Flynn! I, I was going to open it, and I pull my hand back. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely... I tap it. Flynn! What? I mean, and I start to approach him from uh, where I was. I think it's best you hand that over to me. Ah, uh, but... I know, Flynn. What? Uh, it's written in Infernal, and... Uh -huh. You can read Infernal now? Right, well, maybe I'll be able to cover the secrets of it or something. Yeah, you don't want those secrets, then. Take it from me. Fine. I'll take my hand off of it and walk back to Zorkal. I will, like a school teacher, snatch it up. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, hey, uh, and, and put it in a discreet section of my bag. Hey, uh, what, so what are we looking for right now? Right now, I'm just taking samples, uh, looking okay. around, seeing if I can find any clues as to uh, what is going on here. Okay, and I'll pull out my, my backpack and I'll start ru rummaging through it and uh, haphazardly pulling out instruments that I never really used until now, and I'm trying to help as best I can. Uh, and at, at some point, uh, I'll just kind of lean in and, uh, hey, um, <sighs> what happened to Kaylin? She she went up north. Um, you have not spoken to her. No, I. I chapter said that she left. Interesting. You did not see her when you were in Storm Peak. No, that's no. And he begins to reach for his sword. What are you doing? He pulls out his sword. So you were in Storm Peak. How long were you there? I don't know. Um, Use your words very carefully. How long were you in Storm Peak? I don't... Maybe I'm misremembering things. I don't... What's there? You tell me. I, I don't know. I get confused sometimes. And he leans in and he looks real deep <laughs> into your eyes. <laughs> Glitic, as he calls out to Kellick. I just I, I face bump. I have a bloody name. Uh. <laughs> but it's really close to cleric, so that's kind of kind of works. I just I. What would you I like to be referred to as? <laughs> Hi, I'm Kellick. Kellick, nice to meet you. Zorkal, yes. Um, what can I help you with? I have known people of your uh, religious persuasion to be able to um, extract truth from people. Are you I, able to do this? Uh, I'm a bit uh, tapped at the moment. Um, but you, you want to get the truth out of this one? Yes. Good luck. I mean, ask them. They, We didn't go there. Go where? The Storm Peaks? Did we go to the Storm Peaks? Where's Storm Peaks? I don't know. It's not. It's singular. It's a, it's a city. Storm Peak. Okay. Where's Storm Peak? We haven't been there. 
Where is it? It's in Andel. It's the northern part of Andel. Yeah, I don't spend a lot of time in Andel like at all, so I've never been there. We've been mostly uh, trekking through Kaldor. I can vouch for Flynn on that front. Oof, and we've caused some trauma there. I'm going to have everyone make a group <laughs> persuasion check for me. 18. <laughs> persuasion. Um, oh, yeah. Hell yeah, dude. 16. Not better than 18. No, but I rolled a 9. So I mean. Uh, 14. Do you need to get the map? Because I... Yeah, hold on. I have one right Clearly here. Clearly you have we not can, been there, and yet you just told out. me that you have been there. I'll pull the map out. Look, okay, we've been mostly around here, and I'll kind of just start showing him, like, where we've been, and then, oh, and then eventually I'll find Storm Peaks. Yeah, we've never been all over there. Okay. And he puts his sword away, and you can see in his eyes sort of his realization uh-huh. that, oh, you guys haven't been to Storm Peak. Um, <laughs> what happened in Storm Peak? Uh, nothing, nothing too major. Um <laughs> doesn't seem like nothing. Flynn, would I be able to yeah. discuss with you? Just keep that please? sword in the sheath, please. Okay, then don't keep telling me things that you have not actually done. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I just say things and I don't think them through, okay? I'm sorry. That yeah. I can also vouch for. All right, cleric. Flynn, let's go. Let's take a walk. <laughs> All right, I'll walk away. I want to sneak behind them. Uh, yes! <laughs> Do it! Okay, make a stealth check for me. Oh! <laughs> nice. That's Huge really roll. Good. 24. God. Damn. Okay. I'm so tired. That's really good. I'm sneaking. <laughs> She's like, I can't feel my hands, but they work. <laughs> <laughs> so Flynn and uh, Zorkal begin to walk and walk off into the ruins. Um, Oma, you are following closely behind, but Kellogg, you can see them sort of dip behind one of these ruined buildings and you can no longer see them. I, I turn my head before I lose sight of Kellogg and I just give him a little wink. And okay. <laughs> I just raise my eyebrows crossly. And I sigh and, and move to... I'm, I'm going to, during this time, also take to just looking over these ruins and try to get, a, get an understanding of, like, as best I can how the transfer of life force was going into the summoning this creature, like trying okay. to get a hold on that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will have you make a roll for that in just a minute. Sure thing. Flynn, um, when was the last time you talked to Peter Evelyn? Have you spoken with them recently? Um, not since I left to start becoming a Sentinel. Okay. Um, I, I just need to warn you. Um, keep yourself safe. Keep a lookout because we think somebody is hunting sentinels. What? Why? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Also, why, why are you telling me this? Well, because clearly you were not uh, the one who is a part of this. And currently we're trying to bring in anyone who who we know is not a part of this. We have reason to believe that it is another sentinel who is hunting us down. Um. Huh. Again, why, why are you telling me? You, you hate me. We need all the people on our team that we can get, quite frankly. We don't know who is hunting down sentinels. We don't know how many of them there are. Um, we don't know who is safe and who is not. So we need to bring in as many people as we can. Huh. Really hoping you'd say, no, Finn, I don't hate you. Um, <laughs> it's fine. It's totally fine. Um, Always so sentimental. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, do you think it's Kaylin? Is that why you tried to... She's me? the one who let me onto this. Um, when we all left the castle to go on our independent missions as I'm sure you're aware uh, Kaylin went north she yeah. she ended up in, in Storm Peak uh, where she was tasked to go and she met with the sentinel there yeah um, Brock Doe yeah and uh, she met with Brock and uh, and he was apparently taking her to a cave where she would be able to find some monsters and, and kill them 
the entire time they were suspicious that someone was tracking them and hunting them down. Did any details of what they look like? She did not get any, but eventually Brock took her to the cave, um, let her go in by herself, and when she came out, she uh, she went back to their camp and she saw Brock in combat with another person using advanced iron light techniques. She attempted to go down and help, but by the time she got there, Brock was already dead. What? But she told you this, so she's okay. I, what, do we, what do we do? Well, currently, Kaylin came back to the castle. You were still on your, what I believe was your first mission. Okay. But the rest of us joined back up at the castle. Me, Kaylin, Pierre, and Evelyn. We knew that none of us could have done it because the techniques that they were using were advanced. Swordplay and yeah. spells were beyond what any of us were taught. And so we, we banded together and we don't know who is doing this, so we have to keep this very quiet among ourselves. Um, so we all decided that I would stay close to the Iron Light Castle keep my ear to the ground and uh, stay close to Melru as I can as she gets all of the information, see if I could find any other sentinels that had been taken down or sentinels that had been stationed in Storm Peak. We decided that Kaylin would uh, pretend that she had been traumatized by this, this manticore hunt that she had been on and that she would quit, that she would not be able to take it emotionally so that she would be able to investigate from the outside uh free from any iron light onlookers. At the moment, Pierre and Evelyn are uh, heading south towards their original mentors to see if they know anything. (laughs) I knew Kaylin would be fine. So. So what do we do? What do I do? I think you just try and keep your head low. I was supposed to go back and meet up with Kaylin. Uh-huh. But unfortunately, you came back and put <laughs> Melaru in a position where she sent me down here and pretty much uh, in the opposite direction of how the way I'm supposed to go to talk to Kaylin. Um, Wait, do you think Melaru's in on it? There is honestly no way to know. Oh, boy. <sighs> you remember Blood, yes? Yeah. Yeah, we, um, we just visited, um, his pa. Well, when he came back, his body was inspected, and the word was he had gotten into a scuff with an owlbear. Now, I grew up in the south. I know owlbear attacks, and those were no owlbear claws. Hmm. And soon after that, there was Sylvette, who died in Strathmore from... A rock slide, of all things. Now, I just don't buy it. Someone is hunting us. Bring it on. That is a good spirit to have. The last time I saw Evelyn, um, she had just been collecting her things to head back out and to see her mentor. And she intercepted a, a raven that was going to the requisite and uh, well I have it here and he pulls out a letter and um, you take a look at it and he sort of opens up the the top flap to the letter and the first thing that you see when he pulls the letter out is this dark red stained parchment um, that you would recognize as the way of communication between sentinels Um, if a sentinel wants to to send communication back and forth from someone what they do is um, they either slice open a part of their own hand or a recent kill that they had just been on and soak the parchment in that blood and so any sentinel that sees it would immediately know the significance of it so first thing that you see is uh, is that 
and he hands it over to you. And as you open it up, you can see the letter written on the inside. And it says, Your request is adamantly denied. It's an insult to the work I've done here in Keed and a disgrace to the oath we all took. I'm sure you can find what you're looking for elsewhere, but I will have no part in it. Signed, Donna Multora. Who, that name you also recognize as a sentinel stationed in Keed. And and this is Evelyn's mentor? No, this is just a letter that she intercepted at the requisite. Okay. So, we sent Kaelin up to Keed to get more information. I hope she's okay. That's where I was supposed to meet her until yeah. Melorus sent me down here. Maybe she did it on purpose. I was chalking it up to bad timing. I was in a meeting with her. Uh, I was going to request my permanent station to be up north near Keed. And then you came in and... Unfortunately, that tiefling changed her mind. You think... You think Victor's okay? There is no way to know. There is also no way to tell him. I cannot tell you enough how you must not inform him until we can trace his whereabouts that he was not in Stone Peak. <sighs> you're at right, this time. you're right, you're right. What about Chath? You think Chath's in on it too? Flynn, I, I don't. I, I, we have no leads. That's why Kaylin is in Keith right now. She is, she is investigating where this letter came from. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess I'll keep my head on a swivel. I don't know what else to do. Well, it's important that we make our way to Kiel as fast as possible. That is the bottom line. Okay. And we don't know the nature of this letter, and if someone is hunting sentinels, it seems that someone pissed off Donna enough for her to write this letter. We don't know if she's the target now. And if Kaylin has put herself in that line of harm, yeah. why? We need to speak with her. Well, let's go. Okay. I'll, I'll pull out the map while we're, um, while we're sitting there and I'll, I'll look just to see okay. the coordinates. So um, we are... You guys are currently in the Dakir Ruins, which is um, pretty much... It's it's sort of central to Kaldur, um, just west of the Waste. Okay. As you're looking around, um, you look to Keed, which is in the far northeastern region of Ondale. Um, definitely, like, from here, it would take you guys probably weeks to get there, at the very least, if you guys are traveling day and night. Oh god, this is so far. That's why I'm quite frankly pissed that Meloru brought me down here. Yeah. By this time, I might be halfway up to Keith. Well. Uh, what if there is another way to get there faster? That would be preferred. Like, magically. If you know of any teleportation circles that are at the key, I, I would greatly appreciate you uh, letting me know. I don't know if we have any, but I know people that would know or might be able to turn them on. I can only see that as our fastest way. Well. Unless you know of a, you know, being who can teleport us thousands of miles in an instant. You know, without actually, a teleportation circle. I might. But we should probably talk to the you over there and I'll point towards the, the group that might be helpful they might be able to help I doubt they'd want to though but it's worth a try well now you're up to speed unfortunately um uh, well this sucks we'll figure it out I hope so. As he sort of turns and walks back towards the center of town. You know? Cool that you're talking to me. <laughs> Are we friends now? Don't press your luck. 
Oh, come and on. And he continues on to the back, to the, oh. uh, the center well. of town. As right. they pass me, I hide. Okay. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, that, that whole conversation, Oma, you have heard. The whole thing, yeah. The entire Except thing. for the letter, I'm guessing. I can't read the letter. You were, yes, yeah. you did not read the letter, but um, everything that was spoken, you would have been able to hear. Awesome. Now, as you guys are getting back to the center of town, Kellick, what specifically are you looking for? Give me some specifics yeah, on Yeah, yeah. I guess I would like to know what plane they were trying to access. If I can get that, if I can understand what the nature of this key was and if if this ruin or if this there's like a there's like an apparatus for the key right Mm -hmm. and they're what other what like does the the setup of these pillars that we are strapped to does this look like it was built to do this thing i'm gonna have you make two separate checks here i'm gonna have you make an investigation check just to see the physical aspects of it yeah and then i'm gonna have you make an arcana check to see if there's any deeper magical significance okay what what was the first check investigation investigation okay oh brutal so the investigation is nine. And then for Arcana, seven, man. God, that's <laughs> rough. That is rough. Um, looking around, it doesn't appear... You can you can see the bases of these pillars. Yeah. And it looks like with the amount of like moss that is on the ground and sort of grows up onto the pillar, it doesn't look like they were put here recently. Yeah. So you could probably deduce that this isn't these pillars here and these specific spots aren't necessarily part of the ritual um you look up towards the shorter pillar that the key Key was was put into yeah um seems to be normal stone as far as you can tell yeah and uh but from what you can see or what you saw of this portal opening um very clearly the plane of fire Mm, mm, um mm -hmm. you know um from your studies that there is the material plane that you guys currently inhabit. And then there are the outer planes where there is the plane of fire, there's a plane of water, air, and earth. And then beyond those, there is the abyss and the high mountain, sort of as exterior planes to even those. Mm -hmm. Um, But this was not the abyss, this was the plane of fire. Yes, very clearly the plane of fire. Okay, interesting. Um... Does uh, does it look like, if I may, I know I've already made two rolls, uh, does it look like this is a feature of the ruins that existed with before there were ruins, or does this look like this has been added uh, post the destruction of this city? As you're looking around, you look at the destruction and take from this what you will, but where the portal opened up you know when you guys approached the outer buildings were a little bit more intact and as you got further and further in they were more and more decrepit yeah where the portal opened up seems to be the center like where the portal opened up everything around it seems absolutely eviscerated and as you get out there like waves of these buildings that are more and more intact Mm. what manner of place was this uh, I'm just like looking around, lost in thought. <laughs> I wonder how long I have to make camp here before the outcast approaches and tries to make me a bargain. As he's pondering that, uh, as I'm flying out toward the outskirts, uh, below, I'm looking below from where I'm flying, and as I'm flying over the ruins, do I see any parts of the ruins that are perhaps more intact than any other parts, or is it pretty uniform, ruined, decrepit? Make a perception check for me. Great. 26. 26, nice. Um, yeah, so with an aerial view, you would even be able to get a, a better view of this. It looks like there are like waves of destruction um, as it, it moves out from this, this central point. Um, all of it has some sort of overgrowth on it. The the moss and vines and trees have seemed to overtaken all of this, what used to be a town here. Um, but the outskirts, the outer buildings, do seem to be a little bit more intact still. I'd like to investigate one of the outer buildings or signs of life that might have once lived here. Okay, make an investigation check for me. 
Great. Not bad either. A 10. A 10. Um, okay. You, at this point, swoop down into one of the streets. And you hear it before you see it. But you hear what what sounds like, um, like a rusty, almost like door hinge. As you look over and you can see... Um, the remnants of what was once a door sort of moving back and forth in the breeze. And as you look above it, you can see a wooden wooden sign, what was once a shop. As you can see, part of it is sort of dangling down, partly dismantled. Uh, a place of commerce, I think, I think it is. I say this under my breath. I approach the door very apprehensively open the door and walk inside this place. Okay, um, and as you open it, it it squeaks open with every inch that you open it, and looking inside, you can see on the ground where looks to be a wooden floor, you can see a couple of puddles of water and, like, mildew that's begun to rot the actual surface of this floor. You can see a couple of wooden tables and chairs, um, most of them knocked over, but one or two of them still standing with with broken plates and glasses on them. Do I see any, uh, in terms of other furniture, do I see, like, any desks or, like, chests of drawers anywhere inside? Um, in the back, you do see, uh, sort of on the back wall, you see what looks like a cabinet. Yeah. I'm going to go over to the cabinet. Again, apprehensively stepping over, dodging the puddles, uh, holding my feathers close to my body because this place is kind of dank. Uh, just, uh, just yeah. like, finding my way over there. Okay. And as you open up one of the doors to this cabinet, you open it about halfway before the hinges on the door completely give out and fall to the ground with a clatter. Uh. And you look inside and you can see plates stacked on one one another, almost forming what seems to be this singular mass with the amount of cobwebs and spider webs that are all over them. There's just plates in here. Just seems just to plates. be plates. Yeah. Uh I'm just gonna check out the rest of the space and see if there's anything that give me any clues to what once happened here. Okay, make an investigation check for me. Alright, let's hope this one's a little bit better this time. A little bit better, 13. Uh, 13, um, you look underneath that cabinet that you had just looked in, and you can see sort of on the bottom couple of shelves, you can see a couple of bowls, wooden bowls. You can see some mixing utensils. Um, This was probably at one point some sort of um, small cafe or bakery. Yeah. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take one of the bowls. I'm gonna like examine it, and uh, I'm actually just gonna like look at it. I'm gonna take it out of the of the shop, and I'm gonna examine it in the remaining light outside, and just like hold it up and, and see if I can examine it. Okay. And as you're examining it, the wood almost feels like it doesn't have too much give, but it almost feels a little soft, and you uh. can tell that this thing is has been rotting away for some time. Uh, this, place, this place... I don't like this place. And I'm gonna... I'm gonna, like... I'm gonna take the bowl, and I'm gonna, like, cup it under my hand, and then I'm gonna hurl it like a frisbee back toward one of the buildings. Okay. And as soon as it makes contact with the building, it shatters into a million pieces. Ugh. And I'm gonna take off and I'm going to keep heading toward the, the rest of the outskirts. And and as I do, I want to look toward the horizon. I'm guessing I'm looking east based on the direction that I left from the center circle. Yes. Yeah. Do I see anything on the horizon from from where I have taken off to? Make a perception check. 12. Uh, 12. Um, you look off into the horizon and... You don't really see anything. You know, um, you know that the waste, this massive desert, is is off in that area, um, and you can sort of see how the sky, in just off in that direction in the horizon, um, like the the stars in the sky are a little bit less dim, 
probably from the amount of like dirt and sand that are just constantly kicked up in the waste. Um, and that's really all that you see. Um, as I look out toward the waste, I, uh, from, from the, you know, about, uh, 90 feet up in the air where I am and just see the way the air changes and how the like land and this, the haze, uh, that just becomes the nothingness toward the waste. I say a little prayer to myself and I look back toward the waste under my breath place where the world undoes itself oh that I could be as far away from that place as I could possibly be <sighs> and then I'm going to um, I'm going to land on the outskirts I'm going to look back toward the center of the ruins where the party is and lean back in toward the ruins I'm going to hold my staff to my forehead Uh, I don't feel like going anywhere without them, though. Uh, and I'm going to kick back off toward the ground and now go back toward the party. <laughs> In the middle of the ruins. All right, and um, try as you get back, you see everyone else now congregated uh, in the center. I have I have uh, sat with my hands folded over my knees... Uh, sort of just shy of where the portal had opened. Uh, I, I'm still kind of looking. Does it look like this? Is this like a dais where this uh, uh, key structure is? Or is like does it look like there was once a building here? Is there, Can I figure out anything as far as like what this was before the first explosion? Yeah, so looking around, you can see the remnants of of the stone floor there. And you can sort of pick out certain temple-esque landmarks. Some things that you would recognize as it being a temple or at least used to have been. Um, But this this pillar in the center that the key was put into, um, you guys had actually all noticed upon your first approach that Zergath, had this massive pillar over his shoulder and he kind of placed it there. Um, so this this pillar that the key went into wasn't yeah, originally there. He there. had he had just put it there. Interesting. Yeah. Mm. But, but as you as you inspected, it does seem to, for the most part, just be a pillar of stone. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe just something to hold the key in place. And does the temple strike me as uh, a temple that I would recognize that this was Four was it make a religion check time? for me. Uh, I'm still going with you. Don't fail me. Yeah, there we go. Nice. There we go. Um, nineteen. Yeah. So you would definitely be able to know. Um, looking around at the structure, all the little remaining clues that are still here, um, show you that it was not. While its size was large. There were not fancy amenities. It seemed to be one big room. It seemed to be built for um, form, uh, sorry, for function over form. Mm -hmm. Um, And you know also with the area, most likely a temple to Fenra, Mm. um, the old god of Kaldur and the old god of justice. Mm -hmm. And you also know, just with with your time and and research, um, Fenra being an old god um worshippers weren't big on on it was all about action it was all about the action ceremonial kind of thing it wasn't like this would be a place to to gather and perhaps talk uh talk about fenra but no big religious ceremonies necessarily and you can pick that out from what actually remains here Mm -hmm. i'm just like massaging my temples looking over all of this um when do we re- re- rejoin the party? You, you all um, have joined the rest of the party, and at this point, um, Zorkal, you can see, has has walked over sort of near where Kellic is and cleared an area um, near these these stone tiles in the ground and sort of taken some of the dirt and put it into a little vial and put that vial back in his bag. And you can see him sort of looking around and investigating sort of in a similar way that Kellic did. I'll um, 
imitate everything he does. Just not really sure why he's doing it, because I forget. Okay. But I'll just start pulling out vials and grabbing dirt and putting it in a... <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And you can see um, <laughs> Zorkal actually, um, he takes out his sword and he walks over to that stone pillar that the key was in. Mm-hmm. And um, he sort of shaves off with his sword a part of this stone pillar, um, puts that in his bag as well. I will do that as well. Okay. <laughs> Try and get a bigger piece. Bigger, bigger Make a strength check. Okay. That's... An athletics check. <laughs> no, I'm good at those. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to beat his. I, I guarantee you, you're not going to beat his. 16? That's actually not bad. A 16? Yeah, yeah, you got a 23. Oh. Oh. All right. Physically impossible for Flynn yeah. to beat him. Yeah, yeah basically. Yeah. Yeah. I, I narrow my eyes at this. Yeah. Uh, Zarkov. What do you make of this? Uh, from what I saw, a uh, religious ceremony to bring something forth from the plane of fire. Uh, I am not too well versed in summoning spells, um, things of different planes. As Flynn can probably tell you, and he sort of points down to his forearm, and he's got the, the same tattoos as, as Flynn does. As Flynn can probably tell you, uh, we're not too big on... on bringing forth uh, other monsters from other planes that we would then have to fight alongside the normal monsters that we have to fight. Aye. Do you think there was significance in the, the beast they chose? That great uh, ape creature? Probably not as much the significance of the beast as this location itself. Huh. I've, I personally have never even heard of, of a of a portal that big and that that uh, solidified to have ever opened. Uh, what I saw, the beast actually didn't even seem to know that the portal was opening until the offering was given. No, it, it had no communication with these zealots. It makes one wonder if it would have joined them side by side or just truly reach the chaos that they're purporting to be after. I think the latter. That scares me. Yeah. Can I have arrived by the time he said scares me? Yes, you are just <laughs> you are just now landing. Thank yes. you. Uh, and as I uh, touch down and then spin around and plant my staff in front of my face, um, then I hear him say, scares me. And say, oh, are we all in agreement now that we can leave here very soon? Have you done your work? Because I agree, this place is very scary. Why did the outcast approach Zeta here? That's the thing I still want to know. The outcast seems to approach when it's called forth. What it is about this place... I'm not sure either. They didn't summon the outcast here. That doesn't make that much sense to me. I suppose it's possible, but is the end game to just open portals like this and bring in uh, beasts of destruction to wreak havoc upon the land? Is that the end game? Why here? Why this place? Maybe there's already been a portal here before. Yes, this wasn't the first time there's been an explosion. So, maybe there are more places, that is, that that are close to portals. I mean, Flynn, you were talking about your book, remember? And, and about how there used to be a town there similar to these ruins where the terror is. So, so maybe that's another one. That gnome fellow, Holopot, he sent Zeta here. And then she encountered the outcast and a number of these fanatics. And then she returned to Hulk and Spire and was put in prison for reasons she didn't know. Uh, so many loose threads. How are we to weave them together? I don't 
know, but I'm really tired, and I'm too tired to think about it. I, we should get back to Hayfried. I've got some questions for those crystal dwellers. Yeah, we should make camp, though, but maybe not, like, right here in case people come back. Maybe, like, closer to the mountains. I want to be here. here. I would prefer to go closer to the mountains as well, Ulma. Well, what if someone comes by? That's why I want to be here. Well, you'll be sleeping. Desperate for answers. But I uh, respect your concerns. We can move closer to the mountains. It's like in the middle, so we can kind of watch, but from a safe distance. Hi. We got all these other people, too. I mean... That's right. Also, just a quick note, as Alma said, other portals around the world, uh, my eyes got a little (laughs) bit wider, and I clenched my beak a little bit before leaning back a little bit. Right, let's uh, go set up. So, Arkal, can I ask your aid in lifting some of these folks to bring them with us? Yeah. Thanks. Try, you too. Ah, yes. Pop too. Whatever we can do to get out of here. And I will sort of dictate who's to lift what person and, and uh, we'll um, move to toward the mountains to try and set up a, a safe camp. All right. And over the course of the next hour or so, you guys are able to, to move yourselves as well as the unconscious dwarves um, up further into the mountains and to what you all deem as a safe distance from the ruins. Uh. Before we bed down and start doing watches, uh, after we're finished uh, setting up, I will reach out to the party. Um, hey, uh, now that we're all settled as best we can, we have a moment. Um, while he's doing that, can I be collecting like sticks for a fire? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so I'm. Um, this, this entire mountainside is is coated in forests, so Great. grabbing sticks is no issue. Great, so I'm going to be, you, you can talk, but I'm going to be making, um, building a fire and, and you know, casting firebolts on it, over it to kind of grow it. Okay. I'm going to be creating a somewhat, like, mossy dome around us, in, weaving, like, pieces of plant material in between the trees to, like, give us a little bit of shelter. Okay. But I'm still in your shot as well. Listen, guys, um... And I'll look to Zorkal and I'll give him a nod. He nods back. Uh, I hate to ask, but we're in trouble and I'll point. Oh my! Okay. More trouble uh, than usual. What What was that, Omar? You're in trouble! Yeah. Oh no! Why are you acting like that? My people are dying. Oh no! Yeah. We're being hunted. The what? child, it seems, is making fun like a child. I look down from them making the moss. A rare moment. I'm not making fun. We're being hunted, guys. People are attacking sentinels. If it's all you care about, I, I feel it's pertinent to note that us being hunted also includes Flynn. So your sarcasm then extends to Flynn's possible death. So I make a wishy-washy gesture to Alma. Uh, you'll have to forgive a circle. This is how we handle the daily uh, arrows of misfortune we seem to receive. I, um, I touch the necklace full of water on my neck. You know, we've, we've been hunted a lot. So it's not really new for us to be hunted. Still. No, I, I'm sorry, Flynn, you're right. Yeah, and I'll, I'll touch my uh, necklace and I'll hold on to it. And... Yeah. It's all right. I just... I know some of my friends that don't have one of these. We need to help them. We have to help them. What do we need to do? We have an ally up in nor- uh, Northern Keed that has information that would service... 
the Iron Light as a whole, but if you don't care about that, it would service Flynn greatly if we get that information. Um, I'll pull the map out so they can see kind of okay. distances. When you all came back to Adersfeld, I was supposed to make my way up in order to make contact in Keed and collect that information. But unfortunately, the tiefling that you all brought along uh, forced me to come down here to the Deki ruins. And we need a quick way to get to Keed. If any of you have any allies that know how to get to there quickly, I would very much appreciate it. I, I, we actually have resources for once. Um, I'm not sure I follow, though. The, the Sentinels are being hunted. Yes. Yeah. When you don't know by whom. That's what we're trying to find out. We're worried that it is one of our own. Um, we have a first-hand account of, of a witness, and it appears that the person who is hunting other members of the Iron Light... Uh, is using our own techniques against us, which leads me to believe, um, as Flynn can probably tell you, our secrets are well-guarded, and our techniques are honed over years and decades, and you do not just get to that point and use those very specific tactics and techniques uh, without being a part of the Iron Light. And with that first-hand account, we are taking it from, and he looks directly at Flynn, taking it from a very reliable source that it is probably a sentinel. Why would a sentinel hunt their own? That is what we're trying to find out. No idea. And that is probably the information that Kaelin has in key. I'm yeah. going to come back down from the tops of the moss now and, and at the, as the stakes have elevated in the conversation. Uh, and I'm going to respond and say... In fighting within a sacred circle of beings, <laughs> there's always a reason. It's not always a reason that brings people together. It seems like your ranks are dividing. And I look at Flynn, and I look back toward the group. If Flynn's life is in danger due to the nature of the organization, which he has dedicated his life. I think we should do something to help. Of course. Uh, I'm in agreement. Yeah, I mean, I don't want anyone to die. That's why we're doing all the rest of this nonsense, trying to prevent destruction. Uh, undo destruction to that. Uh, brief smile across Flynn's face. Thanks, guys. What, did you expect me to say No. Kind of. Why? Why? What would make you think we would say no to that? Well, because every time I wanted to do something for the Iron Light. Flynn, you want to hunt monsters, not save human lives. Well, hunting the monsters. We don't have time for this. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, so our friend is, my friend, our friend, Caitlin is in Heed, and we need to get there. To help her. Well, okay, well, do you have the map with, like, yeah. the, the portals on it? It is a long way away. It is, but we know Xavier. We know Hayfried. They they maybe have, like, a way to get us there. Maybe, maybe pull Xavier... pull out the map. Okay, pull out here, the map. here, here, here. Whoa, it is so far. Yeah, but... Okay, well... <sighs> um... There's a portal in Stillgate. And in Saddlemount, but I don't know if Xavier's had a chance to, like, like double-check them yet. Uh, if we could get in contact with Xavier, can he teleport someone with him? He did that before, right? Well, he but, got us all out of yeah. the open spire. That was a short him, distance. Well, I know, but it takes him a while because he would have to teleport here, and then he'd have to rest for a while, and then he'd have to teleport there. Wouldn't it be better if he just went straight to like either Stillgate or Saddlemount, make sure the portal's good so that we can all get there? Yeah. Or someone get there faster? I mean, like... Well, I mean, we'll, we'll see him at... He's at Heifried's no, void, right? No, he's not no, because he's, he's with, in, he's with uh, Zeta Adelstead. and Zeta can't go there. Well, if we go, it starts with Heifried though, right? Because that's our fastest way back to anything. Yes, I think Heifried is, is our best bet well, right now. Also, well, we have these Zorko. people here to, to yeah. make sure they get back to at least Nessa Valley. Yeah. Uh, what? At that notice, I'll look at the 
female dwarf that I've been protecting this whole time, and I kind of just stare at her for a second. Okay, and you can see her husband at this point sort of has her head in his lap as he's got like a little cloth towel, and, and in a very similar way to you is sort of patting her yeah, sweat and away. I'll, I'll turn back to you. Yeah. Circle, You're right. when was this person expecting you? I told her as soon as possible. That was days ago, and I... I mean, as I told Flynn, I would probably, if I wasn't here, I would probably be more than halfway there. I would probably be expecting to be there in the next day or so. Okay, well, so you probably have to go back to Addersfeld after this to kind of like tell tell Meloru what's going on. I cannot raise any suspicion that if a sentinel in these areas died, I would be looked at as as the first suspect among my ranks. Um, Right, so you have to go back to Addersfeld. I have to go back to Addersfeld and and tell her. we do have to take these people back home to right. Nestle Valley, but uh, but maybe one person could go straight to Marstock or uh, or and straight to Hayfried and then and 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 then straight to you know Saddle Mount or Stillgate. I'll go. I'll go. I'll do it. You're so slow. You're gonna go over the mountain by yourself and through that forest. I look from Flynn to Shrya, back to Flynn back to try. I have to admit, Flynn, in the limbs category, the useful limbs for traveling distances, you're a bit outmatched. <sighs> Damn it! Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Flynn, each of us has our part to play in this. This world can't save itself. But she needs help. Well, try, right. I look over to Flynn, and then I look back toward uh, Calic and Oma, and... I walk over to Flynn and I put my hand on his shoulder, hands on his shoulders, and I say, I'm not quite sure what it is I might be asked to do, but I can tell you, it'll help you, Flynn, then. And that's what I want and that's what I think we all want. Because I think we are, each of us, now, our chosen family. Another smile. I roll my eyes. <laughs> I'm. I can't ask this of you. I can't send you into danger alone. Flynn, you helped me with with Xavier. You helped me rescue Xavier from prison. You helped Shrya go in a cursed forest to help his people. Why wouldn't we help you if your friend was in danger? I'm just. I'm just worried Shry is going to be by himself. No one has to tell us what to do to, to do the right things. We're the agents of repair, and we can go and fix things whenever we want to, and if Fl- and if Zayn- All right, Alma, all right. If we're worried about Shry's safety, all he has to do is deliver a message to Kaelin, right? That's the extent of it, yeah? I'll look to Zorkal. What's the goal here? Oh, well, I was going to do a couple of things while I was there, make sure she's okay. Um, and God forbid that there is someone there who is currently hunting the sentinels posted there, we would have no choice but to help. Um, that is the oath that we take. Right. And so if there's help needed, then do that. If not, at the very least, Kalen has probably gotten more information. Well, Shaya, maybe you don't have to go alone. Maybe Tito can go with you. You both can fly very fast. Maybe. If he's at the point where he feels like he can accompany me, I'll have to see where he's at and where his personhood is at. And I'll have to gauge from there. And then I look, uh, I'm going to look back at Flynn. Flynn, is there any way that if I were to be a messenger or an emissary or associated with your, your organization, is there any uh, rank that I might carry, a uh, emissary, or any kind of way of saying that I'm associated or with with your organization that I may be trusted in that kind of way? Um, I think to myself for a brief moment. Um, I have an idea. I'll take my bow off. And I'll walk up to Shrine and I'll hand it to him. 
and I'll point at the bow, and as you stare at it longer, you see engravings that are exactly the same as the black tattoo on my left arm. And it matches completely. And if you were to glance at Zorkal's, you can see that there are small differences in the one on his. This is my name. And I point and I tap on the bow. You hand that to Kaylin, And she'll know. She might just think he killed you. Then also tell her, TM sent you. She'll know what that means. I lift up one of my talons and go to my staff and I inscribe amidst the geometric patterns those letters and press my thumbs to those letters and you see those initials suddenly meld into the staff and glow in the same glow as the geometric patterns on the staff. Yeah. And once you're there, Shia, I can, I can reach out to you through the tethers. Yes, that's right. We'll be able to communicate. Yes. You have to be to the point, though, because... Sometimes you do elaborate a bit much. You're, you're a verbose one, Shia. Well, if, if that's the concern, um, perhaps you can write down something on a piece of parchment uh, that I can reference to make sure that I don't go uh, too far out on a limb. It's just a matter of the extent of the spell. It, it's only got so much force, you know. It can only carry so much. Oh, you mean talking to you? Oh, right. right. Precisely. Well, and I'll look to Zorko. We can maybe write down some bullet points if that you think that'll help. And I'll look to Zorko. I can write what I was going to tell her. Yes. There we go. Well, Please, that can, would be great. And then we can give you that and you can pass it along. Especially if the road is long. Aye. Yeah. All right. But it starts with going back to Nestle Valley. Yeah. For us. Yeah. I still think, I still think you should get some rest though, Shreya, before you leave. We should do it in the morning because it'll be a long flight for you and, and, and you should be in tip-top shape. I agree. That's smart. I haven't had rest since since we briefly left this world. Yeah, well, since we died. As much as I want to go now, you're right, Alma. We need a we need a rest. And in the morning, maybe I'll look to Kellogg. Maybe you can send a message to Xavier or Hatefreet. Why? Maybe tell Xavier to meet us at Hatefreet's place. Well, Xavier should probably make sure that either the still gate or the saddle mount right. portal is, is cleared. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, so he doesn't need to meet us. I can just ask him to check on yeah. that for us. Which, else, which he... one do you want to go to? Which one sounds like more fun? Well, I'll, look, I'll bring the map out. <laughs> more, more efficient. Sure. I'll bring the map out and I'll, uh, I will look at the distances. It seems that Saddle Mount looks potentially closer or less of a trek because you, you don't have to go over mountains. Do you feel more comfortable flying over mountain ranges or flying over a forest? I can tell you with confidence that though I would prefer to see what the mountains look like that I would fly over, I may get too distracted on my way. If I were to be flying over forest, I think I would stick to my stated goal. Tank of Kalen. As a shiny gem. Oh, you gotta get there so fast oh, before the shiny gem goes away. Right, somebody might snatch that up. Uh, you've given me a great way to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tomorrow you can contact Xavier and, and see if he can clear the saddle mount portal just to make sure it's all good good to go. I'll do it first thing. Also, and I look at the map, the last place I'm thinking of going right now is another major population center of this world. And uh, that's fair. <laughs> I don't know much about Stillgate, but I would prefer being away from a larger capital right now. Take it from me, Shreya. Stillgate would swallow you whole. Uh, Gotta be careful. To be honest, I wouldn't want to go there either. Hey, it's another big town. Do you think they have bodies there? What? Bodies? Yeah, well, we need a body. What? What do you mean a body? For for what? Oh, well, Thaddeus is only a head, so... I oh, keep forgetting. Holy crap. Body. Oh, what do you think I meant? But we've been dealing with a lot of bodies lately, Alma. Very not true, in the... very true. 
We did say we were going to help him, and it's been a minute. Well, time is of the essence. If I finish yeah. my goal and keyed, and then if I want to come back a different way, perhaps I could see if there's the correct uh, limb structure for Thaddeus in, in Stillgate. Though I will still not prefer going there. Well, uh, let's cross that bridge when we come to it, Shreya. Stillgate. From my experience there, I, I think he would hate it. Uh, yeah, as much as I want to help Thaddeus, uh, I fear for your sanity in a place like that. Sanity? I fear that place just from those words you just said. <laughs> it's the Jewel of Andel, but uh, it's a dim, dusty jewel at like that. Uh. Definitely not as shiny as Kaylin. That's right. <laughs> Right. So, once you get to her, make sure she's safe. We can meet you in Saddle Mount. If you want to bring her back there. Because that's where the, the circle is. Find her in, in Keed. Make sure she's alright. And I'll look to the Zorkel and we'll, we'll meet her in... What do you think? Saddle Mount? Sounds like a good option to me. That also depends on if, once I get back to Addersfeld, if I can then convince them to station me up north. Yeah, but we... We can't plan too far ahead right now. I think the main thing is we have to get these people back to their home and we've got to get back to the hit, to the, to the goopy void to see what's going on there because yeah. there's a lot of nonsense. And the important thing is for Shreya to get to your friend as fast as possible. That'll be like, yeah, that'll be a rough outline. We can always, and I'll look to Kellick, send a message. Exactly. Okay. Well, that sounds good to me. I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> right. I'm exhausted that. myself. Um, we gotta watch, though. Yeah. I'll take first. Me too. I can take the second. I'll wake up and take the last. I'm usually an early riser, so I can wake up early with you. Little sarcastic one. Okay. All right. Get some sleep. We have a big day tomorrow. I'm going to, as we begin to to make to settle, I guess, uh, look back over the ruins. Um, were the bodies of the acolytes that were killed still there, or were they removed after our battle? After your battle, and in the time that you guys had died, it seemed that they were removed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. when you reawoke, they were no longer there. Gotcha. I will just grimace at the thought, but besides, um, just a note besides the one, um, zombified acolyte that was, oh, that was man. helping pour the, the liquid into your Who body. left with? Okay. Who had left. Who yeah. left? Cause I think there were two of them. I think three people left. So that, was... that is correct. All of them at this point have either gone with Artemisia or were no longer there. Okay. Yes. There are no corpses that remain on the battlefield. Correct. Okay. Just almost mentioned of, of bodies just like made me blanch, and I just wanted to check that there weren't any souls remaining to be sent to the afterlife. <laughs> um, and I'll just grimace at that and then uh, uh, begin to sort of lackadaisically patrolling the, the area. I'm going to okay. roll over and pull my bedroll over my head. <laughs> All right. I'm going to find my way up into a tree and assemble myself a little nest for, for my to be able to sleep. Um, so it's me and, uh, Kallik watching first. Are you doing what you said during your watch? Is that, like, during your watch? Uh, uh, it was just a quick glance. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, then I'll sit down and start for the first watch. All right, um, Flynn and Kellick, as everyone else is going to sleep, um, and you guys are about to do whatever you are going to do, can I bo have both of you make a sure. perception check for yeah. me? Eighteen. 23. Okay. Um, Kellick, you are looking around and seems that you guys are in a pretty good position. You guys have, um, you guys are covered by forest, pretty heavy forest on all sides. You can see clearly down the mountain. You can see clearly up the mountain. You have a pretty good vantage point on, on anything that might approach you, but for the most part, you don't see anything. Um, Flynn, you get the exact same thing, but Every 
every once in a while, just off in the distance, sort of echoing off of the mountain behind you, just barely get the hint of what might be the crack of thunder. Uh, every time I'll hear it, I'll kind of turn around to see if I can spot like the source. It looks like it's coming back probably pretty far on the other side of the mountain. You're just, you're, it's like you're getting an echo of an echo of an echo of just every once in a while, crack of thunder. Um, at that, uh, um, I'm gonna go down to the ruins. I'll keep, I'll check an area down there and keep an eye on it. Um, I just want to test some stuff and I don't want to do it with everyone around. All right. Um, I promise I'll come back to go to sleep, and if I don't, you come find me. I hear a lick of infernal. (laughs) No, it's nothing like that. All right. Have uh, have fun. All right, I'll be back. All right, Flynn, you trot down the mountain and get back to the ruins. What are you doing? Um, combination of hearing that thunder and a storm, and also hearing what Zorakol has told me that there's someone, possibly in the Sentinels, that is far more powerful than us, trying to kill us. Um, I will sit down and pull out my books. I will pull out the Iron Light book. I will pull out the Abjuration book, the Evocation book. And I will start pouring through them, trying to find any type of information of more power, ways to get more power so I can be ready when this being evidently comes. Okay. Um, And uh, I land on a spell... That looks similar to Thunderwave. Uh, but it's the movements are a bit different, and I really focus in and I really read each line and I really make sure I understand all the details and I flip over to uh Evocation. Yeah, the Evocation book. Evocation book. And cross cross reference it with some of the phrasings in there. And once I feel like I've gained enough information, I stand up and I turn back to the group and... Oh man, if this works, I hope it's not too loud. And I will uh, attempt to rub my fingers together to summon that uh, energy uh, that I would tap on my foot. The thunder wave energy that I would send and then stomp to expel that. But instead, I take my fingers and I put them to the ground behind me. And I run them across the dirt in a direction uh, ahead of me maybe 20 feet ahead of me. And I would like to try and send that energy to explode on a, one of the pillars, on the pillar that I was tied on. Okay. I'm going to have you make an arcana check for me. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh no <bad>. way, dude. <laughs> a natural 20. <laughs> I am Woo! And before your very eyes, the pillar bursts and explodes, sending debris 20 feet in, in directions all around. Whoa, 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 whoa. I look back to where the group is to see if uh, any startling, or any rustling of... Did I wake anyone up? <laughs> um, okay, look, just off in the distance, you hear just the faintest, like, <laughs> pop. <laughs> I just... I and just, then like, a second after, you hear off in the distance, "Woo!" <laughs> it's like my my reaction is like, like careful tension, and then just like irritation. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Um, after my uh, realization that I'm pretty sure no one has been woken up by my um, epic display of magic, I will kneel down and kind of take a deep breath. Whew. Yeah, man, that that feels like that's all I've got. I look at my hand, and I look at my tattoo. It kind of is now just fading after casting the spell, the red one, just fading. A little smile across my face. Okay. Okay. And I'll pack up my books, and I'll head back to our camp. While he's away, I just want to take a... I I want to take out this, this spooky book that we picked mm-hmm. up. No. I'm not going to open it. <laughs> okay. Are you sure? <laughs> I don't know. Am I sure? 
What is it? Yeah, I mean, what what does it? No, there's there's no effect on there's you. No, I just okay. I just personally want you to open the book. <laughs> yeah, here we go. I I I know better than to be. Uh, at least for the moment, <laughs> I know better than to open it. Uh, having having plucked it out of Flynn's hands, um, I just want to look at it, the the bindings of it, and see is it a is it a hefty book? Is it a um, like how many pages are we talking here? Like uh, like is this a uh, textbook or is it a like um, leaflet? <laughs> you know? No, it's it's probably um, without opening it. Probably a couple hundred pages. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just want to. But as you're looking at it, though, um, it's like it's the thickness of a couple hundred pages. But as you look at it further, it, you deduce that it's probably less than that mm-hmm. w- because you can see that, like when water gets into paper, you know how paper sort of ripples a little yeah. bit and expands. and expands, and that sort of expanded the book a little bit more mm-hmm. um, that you can see. But still. Uh, Probably 200 plus pages. Mm. Let's keep you in a safe place. And I sort of like look up as, as if to regard uh, Zachriel. You and me have some stuff to figure out. Might have to ask a favor. But uh, another time. And once more, I will, like, bury it between <laughs> health kits and uh, my sort of, uh, uh, like, a blanket in my uh, in my bag. Okay. And right as you do, Flynn once again gets back. Oh, well, I guess I didn't wake anyone up. Did I wake anyone? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Cool. We have been needing this. I think this is the heaviest any of us will have slept in a while. Speaking of, I am exhausted. As usual. Um, do we wake him up? I think it's about time. Yeah. You doing okay? Yeah. I'm doing alright. Yeah. It's, uh... Been a crazy day. Did we really die? I don't know. I, uh... I did. How do you know? Well, uh... I can see things uh, that others can't, so I just can see the thread of my life. Huh. And it, uh, it's absent. In that moment. Weird. I am frustrated that uh, art music got away. And it's worse even than that. Uh, now she knows that I'm out here. That I didn't die like she intended me to. Oh, yeah, that sucks. So, you know. We are all being haunted, then. And I'll grasp my uh, necklace, water necklace. I really hope these things work. Uh, I think we'd know if they didn't. Yeah. Are we going to be okay? Do you mean in like a physical sense or sort of a emotional sense maybe Psych- like psychiatric all the above maybe mm-hmm. oh, uh, I think decidedly no <laughs> okay but we may yet live through this I, uh, <laughs> we <laughs> we skirted death there's few that do that so decidedly yeah really uh so concretely yeah brings things into perspective a bit. How's that? I'm sorry for getting upset at you when you found out that your friend passed away. 
Oh. Ah. Take nothing of it, then I... Uh, I was... Um, not myself. Um, yeah, and I should have noticed that, but I just got so angry that I feel like everyone doesn't think I'm doing the right thing. And I think I do. When you called it a punch card, I took that personally. I'm sorry. Um. You're on your own path, Finn. And you're going to have to find your own way on it. Yeah. But, uh... I'm not going to keep quiet if I see you making mistakes that I made. I was once as vehemently devoted to Femir and her temple as you are to the Iron Light. More so, even. Our scrutiny of these people and their motives is not scrutiny of you. Uh, it is, uh, in fact, our interest in protecting you that makes us so uh, focused on what the nature is of this monster hunting business. Well, maybe sometime I'll tell you about it. I'm pretty tired right now, but I think I'd like to. Maybe it'll help you understand why I care so much. Hi. Um, I look forward to hearing of it. Cool. Yes. Cool. And as I head over to wake up the next person for watch, I will think back to the beginning of our adventure just meeting our group and how I've tried so hard to connect with them and how it seems to be in in reach now alright and as you think about that you make yourself ready for sleep as Shreya you wake up for second watch I'd like to go around the edges of our camp and just do a sweep at first to make sure nothing is Approaching on, on our party as the first thing. Okay, make a perception check for me. Fifteen. Uh, Fifteen. You don't see any movement, um, but as you are flying and, and circling the group and looking out, you feel a cold breeze swoop down the mountain. Mm. I look up. <laughs> what does it seem to be coming from? Just looks like it's coming from it's up coming the mountain. Just, the uh, mountain. <laughs> just a cold air that seems to be moving down the mountain. Feel that air the, runs up. A feeling of anxiety runs up my spine as I touch my staff. Rededicate to what I'm supposed to do. Prepare myself for the journey ahead, and uh, I pull out a, a, a piece of uh, a small piece of bark. Uh, I'm going to scribble on it with the. With, uh, I'm going to put the piece of bark uh, up against the tree and I'm going to scribble on it using uh, my staff uh, in glowing uh, letters uh, a small message uh, to Ulma and uh, I am going to inscribe it and then uh, put an S sign it and I'm going to go down to where she is sleeping on her bedroll and I'm going to tuck this note uh I'm going to tuck it uh, at her feet. Yes, I'm going to tuck it at her feet. Okay. Um, and as your watch comes to an end, um, you go over to wake Zorkal, and right as you reach your hand out towards him to uh, to wake him up, his eyes burst open. He reaches his hand out and grabs the back of your neck, pulls you in close, takes out his knife, and puts it up to your throat. Do I have Seize. enough reaction to put a talon in the way of the knife? The sharpness of a talon? It is just it's too, too quick. It's too quick. All right. 
as he sees that it's you. He's a friend. I'm a friend. And he relaxes. He puts his knife back, puts his hand back down, lets you step back. I'm going to reach over to my staff and I'm going to tap the crystal to my forehead. It glows pink and then it glows a light blue, a calming blue as I tap that to his forehead and cast resistance. And this glowing okay. blue washes over him. Hopefully, maybe this will set you at ease during your watch. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, okay, yeah, you can go to sleep. I'm, I... I'm awake. Okay. All right. I can usually handle myself if you want to let uh, little Miss Sarcasm over there uh, continue her rest. Okay, if you'd like. Let's uh, let's let her get some more sleep. Perhaps if she's not so overtired, she won't make uh, sarcastic comments. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, and you. May the purest spirits of the earth be with you. I give a nod, and then I go back up to my little nest. Back to sleep. Okay. (laughs) Zorkal takes his watch. <laughs> he is gonna make a perception check. <laughs> there you go. Okay. As the rest of you jolt awake to the sound of two pieces of metal being hit together, and all right, time to wake up. <laughs> it is morning. <laughs> <laughs> Get yourselves up. We need to move. <sighs> As you can see, Zorkal standing there. You can see Zorkal standing there with like two sort of foot long metal pipes that he was just banging together. All right. Wait a second. Wait a second. Why is the sun so high? Wasn't I supposed to take a watch? Oh, yes, you were. I was on my way to wake you up. This one. Rejected that. <laughs> you are all alive. I protected you. You're welcome. Let's go. We have things to do. But, but I was supposed to take a watch. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I was kind enough to let you sleep. I don't need to sleep. <laughs> well, that's not what the drool on your uh, <laughs> on your chin says. Yeah, well, maybe I'm only drooling because I overslept. Maybe now I'm going to be completely useless. Welcome to the party. <laughs> Matt, are we ready to go or not? Do you all need to uh, wake up and have your cups of tea and... Uh... You know, I'm ready. I'm ready whenever. Yeah. yeah, 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 I'm ready. Let me just roll up my mat. And as I'm rolling up my mat, I see a little plank of wood fall out. I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to look at it. But I'm going to, like, cover it with my body a little bit. Okay. The top of it folded in. There's... Open in a moment of solace and solitude. That's what the top flap oh. is going to say. I want to open it so bad. <laughs> um, Temptation. Can I tell that it's Shreya's handwriting? It's on a piece of wood. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some moss, Probably moss growing on the edges. Yeah. I feel like <laughs> look over my shoulder at Shreya. I gotta put it in my backpack. Okay. As you all wake, you all get a long rest. Yay! So, I think I have everything I need. I look over to Flynn. I have my instructions. I will make as much haste as I can to get there quickly. And also, I will miss you all during the time that I'm gone. But I can tell you, I will never waver from my mission. And I will do you all proud as a member of the Agents of Repair. And uh, as you, as, a, as soon as I say repair, uh, I take my staff and I fling it up into the air and it starts uh, spinning and spinning and circling as I do I kick off from the ground and I do a diagonal uh, circular uh, flight maneuver around the staff as it spins through the air. And as you see it spin through the air, this 
burst of purple energy and electricity comes out of it and consumes me and the staff within it in this sphere that it creates around the staff. And in this burst of energy, you see the electricity forming and moving and molding and shaping my body. Uh, and as you see from the warped pieces of reality, you see this fit of feathers pop out from beyond it. And you see me in a little bit of a smaller form than I was before. But now I resemble actually just an eagle, a golden eagle. Uh, as I Sick. as oh, I cool. sweep up through the air, uh, I circle around uh, the camp uh, and give a little dive bomb nod of approval before you see me uh, whisk into the air uh, up hundreds and hundreds of feet above and then take off toward the mountains. And one note quickly, Ethan, uh, as a golden eagle, as opposed to my former, you know, Aarakocra self, uh, my flight speed is now 80 feet. Whoa! Wow. That, that is quick! Sick. Okay. Bye, Shrya! Bye, Shrya! Zorkal, did you give him a list of things? Yeah, I, I slipped a thing in his back. Okay, good. Oh, good. he is not going to find that. No. Well, good thing you can tell him where it is. Uh, yeah. What are, what are we Bye! Talking? What a say a sword, Shrya! Saddle mount! Meet in saddle mount! He's gone. In the, well, in the distance, you just hear. And as you all see Shrya flying off into the distance, up and over the mountain towards Marstock, that is where we're going to end this session. We're going to call it right there with Shrya mm -hmm. heading out over the mountains. And with that, thank you all so much for listening, and we can't wait to see you all again next week. Bye, nerds. Ow, ow. Bye, Bye, nerds. Bye, nerds. Bye, nerds. Bye, nerds. Oh. Go, Bye, nerds. Go, Go. Go. I'm Shrya, bro. What's up, nerds? This is Cameron. I play Shrya on the podcast. I can't tell y'all enough how much we appreciate your continued listening and diving into the story. Uh, we are so pumped about recording uh, every time we do. Uh, it just brings us so much joy. If it brings you as much joy as it brings us, uh, be sure to like, subscribe, follow us on our social channels, engage there. We're pretty active there. Uh, it'd be great to hear from you. Uh, also, if you want to engage with the community on a wider level, we have a Discord that you can join. Uh, and in, engage in the conversation there. Uh, also, if you want to support us in a different way as well, we also have a Patreon. And uh, our Patreon subscribers really uh, you prop us up and hold us up and allow us to continue to do this incredible work that we, that we do. Uh, so if you're moved to do that, we would so appreciate that as well. Uh, also, uh, if you're just hearing this, uh, and, and perhaps you're hearing this uh, in a different context, and you're wondering, oh man, I, I need a refresher on some of the of, on some of what's happened. You can always listen to our Harken backs. They are uh, thirty minute snippets, and they go through ten episodes uh, per episode of Harken Back. So if you want a refresher, uh, if you want, if you have a friend you want to tell about the podcast, and a quick way to get up to speed and caught up to what's going on right now, those Harken backs are incredible as well as a refresher or as a way to get someone caught up very quickly. Uh, so thanks again for listening. Uh, you guys are awesome. And we love doing this for you. And uh, see you on the next one. Bye, nerds.